Go ahead. All right. We apologize. I, um, we are having some te technical difficulty. We really want to share this information. So we're going to go again. And fingers crossed, feel free to share this. This is our part two to the um, initial video proposing a Petrochin solution. You need to hear some of this information. And the panel with me today, Felicia Holder, Anthony Defoe, Janice Cricky, Shari Wilson, will discuss what we're about to hear on these videos. Come should invest in Petrochin and keep it in Caribbean hands. This suggestion comes from political leader of the Grenada Progressive Movement, Terence Forrester. During an exclusive interview with MTV News Tuesday, Forrester says CARICOM leaders should come together and invest in the Trinidad company, ultimately making it Caribbean. And he is calling on Grenada's Prime Minister to lead the way. And I see... Why would it be though? Right. Well, we tried. We, we, tried, <laughs> we tried everything. We tried a couple times. We did. Um, but that first video, which is out in the public space now, um, that I am sharing. Won't change despite all we do. Then along came the point, Lisa, in the um, industrial estate, where the sugar workers' children became the welders and the technicians and bought time. But since Point Lisas, we have seen how the boom and busts have resulted in companies that shut down, leave the country, and leave the workers. So the model of from the energy sector using oil and gas resources has failed because we have not taken that money to develop the rest of the economy. This issue about petrochemical is, I don't think it's about a refinery. I think it's about the burden of adjustment. There is an adjustment to be made, and the burden is falling completely on the workers. The points that have been made about the negligence of boards. Government, I, I, I beg to disagree. I don't think in 1985, that, as the New York Times reported, that the government bought the refinery to save the jobs of workers. The government bought the refinery to save votes. That's a different thing, because if they were to save the jobs of, of workers, they would proceed to manage that in such a way that it would not happen today, what is going to happen. What people are ranting about is that all the people, a large number of the people who are responsible for the disaster that Petrochemical has become, have either gone or they have gone with the money. And why should this happen? to the workers, why are they the ones, and not just the workers, but all who depend on that trickle-down, that trickle-down economy is what is going to collapse. And this is why this discussion is a real space right now. The Lloydness Institute entered this discussion at Petrochin before this was announced about the closure of the refinery, when we realized that there seemed to be a complete Impuls uh, impulsive way. This, there was a, a trajectory that this petrochemical issue was going down as though it was not a national issue, as though it was simply a cabinet decision, a board implementation, and that these things, this resource, belong to the board and the, gov and the MEP people who have been voted into office. That it was, that it all. <clears throat> The view was that, from the government's perspective and the board's perspective, that the only counter voice and the only interest they had to deal with across the, the table was the oil field workers train union. And we got in, we got involved in order to establish the point that Petrochemical, the oil field workers train union, is an important stakeholder, but not the only stakeholder. We are all the stakeholders. <clears throat> and so we came to the discussion, and apart from the chairman and the, um, the president of the the chairman of Petrochemical and uh, Mr. Roger, we invited what we considered stakeholders, the mayor of San Fernando, the chairman of Cipara Regional Corporation, the business, other labor organizations, community representatives, and so on, to make an input into that conversation because it was a national issue. 
that too. I was tremendously disappointed in the way the company handled that discussion, in that they just dug in their heels and proceeded. And the government has proceeded with the audacity certain people have of thinking that's a board, we've given the board to run the affairs, that's their business, but it's not their private company. People can do that. People, people who take the risks with their own money and set up their company, we cannot tell them what to do. We might not like the fact that they close the company, they put their money on the line. These are people who are managing assets and resources on our behalf. And, and that is the point that we want to raise as citizens of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and the Lloyd Best Institute have said it also, and perhaps it is time for a coming together of all civil society groups to stand up against this decision. The government does not have the authority to make this decision unilaterally. They have not been given that as a mandate. They did not elect on shutting, they, they did not campaign on shutting down and selling Petrotrin. This is our oil company, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, yours and mine, and the government and the board and the union alone do not get to dis make this decision. Yes? Correct. Tony? Yes, I, I agree. I, I am extremely upset at the whole uh, situation because, again, you have a couple reports stating that it was never in the stars or any in cards indicating that, that you know, their recommendation was to close this company down. It was a matter of refabricating and, and, and changing out your management and, and really tweaking the company in itself in order for it to, to make a profit. And like you said before, uh, you know, the company is hemorrhaging at, at, at such a phenomenal rate. If these things were addressed, Petrotrin off the bat would make a profit. So there's something underlying going on here where this entire ensemble is concerned and the government is taking an initiative that that you know is not approved by the people in, in its true true sense i mean th this is going to do too much to the economy and to the nation and to its citizens uh if this actually comes to pass i mean if, if we think Karani was uh, a big deal wait wait and see what happens when Karani Car decimated a large cross-section of Trinidad and Tobago but Karani did not impact would not impact by, by that time it did not have the ability to impact the way Petrotrin will impact That's every right. sector of That's this right. country. That's right. Every That's business group, every 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 commercial um, organization, every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago stands to 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 be affected of by, course. by this. I mean, point. I myself, I, my 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 business is uh, within the optical field, and and we do a lot of uh, uh, safety glasses and stuff for the employees of Petrotrin. And, you know, with this entity closing down now, I mean, I'm just one out of many other business people that's, that's going to feel the pinch, literally. Janice. Yeah, I totally agree with what the lady said because, again, and I, I think we're going to have to just keep repeating ourselves because until people start sitting up and taking But break it into bite sizes, right? Uh -huh. Break it down into bite sizes. Mm -hmm. Trinidadians need to understand Correct. there is critical information that cannot be removed from the conversation. Information like Petrotrin is not just another company. Correct. Petrotrin is one of two legs upon which this country stands. Yeah. Correct. All of our income passes through the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. That's our external income. The government abuses its position and has enacted taxes against the people to fill gaps in their own incompetence, in their own mismanagement. They've not been able to effectively steward the economy and they're trying to fill those spaces by taxing the population relentlessly. But without a petrotrain, we wouldn't be filling a gap. We'll be trying to cover the entire operation of the country where the taxpayers will have to pay the $5 billion that it takes to run the hospital, the, tax, the, the, the public health sector. The taxpayers will have to pay the $5 billion it takes to run the education sector. The taxpayers will have to pay the $9 billion that national security costs this country. We have a $60 billion budget. Yes. That's what we have. Petrotrin impacts on that budget by income yes 
Now, if PetroChain is not profitable at this point in time, let us have that conversation. Correct. And if they believe that the country should not be only reliant on oil and gas, I agree. Let's have that conversation as well. But let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater. Let's focus on right-sizing the economy. And you have to start with making PetroChain functional. If at the very least, and I put this into the public space without fear of contradiction, you have to keep those 5,000 workers gainfully employed. You cannot drop a bomb like that on a nation and expect it to survive. They are going to decimate whole communities. Crime will skyrocket. Poverty and hunger. That's right. <clears throat> this is unchecked greed and manifest dysfunction on the part of the government. Something yes. needs to be done. It seems as if they just want to keep enslaving the population. Mm -hmm. That's the, game. That's the name of the game is about enslaving the population. You know, uh, not allowing them to have a level of power to speak for themselves or, or, or you know. But this is, this is coming across to me like state-sanctioned theft. The people who own Petrotrin, again, I want to say this, we are sitting back. We as the people of Trinidad Tobago are sitting back and waiting on Ansel Roger on the OWTU to make a decision of what's being done with our company. I mean, I want to break it down. If you own a car that you hired a man to drive, the man can make a decision to sell it on his own. And if he think it's unprofitable, fire yourself. We'll get another driver. That is an analogy for what's going on here. The government was put in this job to manage. If they cannot manage, do not tear apart our country. Fire yourself. The people of Trinidad and Tobago are a greater stakeholder, have a far more important voice in this conversation than the government, the board, and the union. And I think that it is ridiculous that the country is sitting down and waiting for all of these people to decide what happens to us as a nation mm -hmm. and our future, and we're not getting involved. That's right. Do we have That's a body right. that can look into and investigate there is supposed to be the parliament is supposed to be that body but the parliament that was convened conveniently to have four debates on the appointment of a commissioner of police cannot be convened to discuss something this important the people of Trinidad Tobago we elected 41 representatives and of those 41 representatives, their job is to keep the Prime Minister in check. Mm -hmm. Every one of those 41 representatives, today, 40 others, are supposed to be writing the President of the Republic to say, we no longer support the Prime Minister. That's how Westminster is designed. And that is the, the regulation that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. In Trinidad and Tobago, we do not have any of the systems that developed nations have to protect the people from rampant abuses by government. Again, this shows that our population is not empowered to stand up and take action against wrongs of the society in terms of what the government is doing. And, 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 and Shari, I want to say, that's why there's a progressive empowerment party, because the conversation that we keep bringing to the public mm -hmm. is inform, educate, empower yourself. That's right. That's right. So you empower know. yourself so that government cannot do you what government wants. You need to be able to regulate and right size laws that the government write. The government can't just write a law like it tried to do with the cybercrime bill that would just eviscerate your civil rights and your human rights. It is an insanity of epic proportions. We've let, we've let this country operate on autopilot for 56 years. We've lost trillions of dollars. We are a shadow of what other countries that came to be at the same time as us that had similar fortunes, mm -hmm. similar challenges. We look to Dubai, we look to Singapore, we look to New Zealand that has 4 million people. If you pluck New York City, 8.5 million people out of the United States of America and put New York City to stand alone, New York City is a first world nation and Trinidad and Tobago is a failed nation. It seems to me that our leaders are not patriotic to our land. If you're willing to just sell off and yes, well said. You know, and, and make deals, uh, uh, the population is not involved and engaged. It seems to me that you're not a patriot of our country. It's as simple as that. For far too long, 
we've allowed government to just run rampant, steal, enrich themselves and their partners. The people have never, we, we've, we've, we've traded our voice for bacchanal and noise. We, we, we get involved through memes, we make jokes, we laugh at everything. Eric Williams consigned us to, to, to a dark, dark fate when he said we're nine day people, that we will stay focused. AV oil, ANV oil, that hundred million dollars, that reached the Privy Council. If Petrotrain is shut down, it is Petrotrain that is prosecuting ANV oil. That's right, that case goes on. That is Keith Rowley's personal friend, Nazim Bash. Do, this is with talking about government skirting criminal activity and the average citizen sitting down thinking that they're watching a television show or they're watching a cricket match. You bowl, I bat, and let's see the outcome. The outcome always is the citizens of the Republic lose. Yeah. Why aren't they getting that though? Why aren't they getting that? In another country, you could imagine you in a, in a first world nation and you elect your... Look at Trump. If Trump forget to flush the blasted toilet, CNN put in that as a headline news. <laughs> we live in a country where our media is corrupt, bought out, sold to the, to the highest bidder. When we, when we hear news, when we hear people say things, the media don't ask a question. I asked the other day, $50,000... I, I fully support Commissioner Griffith, but if I was in, if I was in the media room when the commissioner said fifty thousand dollars for a bribe for a gun license, pay to who? Exactly. That is a serious statement to make. Mm -hmm. You didn't say you overheard. You said it. Yes. So if police officers are at the level where they could issue a gun license, because mm -hmm. that can be a sergeant or a corporal mm -hmm. or a police constable. That had to be at a khaki level. And if somebody at the khaki or somebody's at the khaki level, and I'm just using this as a point, mm -hmm. was receiving $50,000 bribe, why aren't those people in custody now? Yeah. We are not operating as a real country. We have little fiefdoms, little office holders, and they all get their little piece of power and they trade power at the expense of the people. The public of Trinidad and Tobago needs to have its voice heard on this. If we cannot get uh, an accommodation and a commitment from the union to work together with the stakeholders, if we cannot convene a round table of all civil society groups, I hear Sunuti Maraj talking about people in South and the South May and all that's good. But every single citizen of Trinidad and Tobago is a stakeholder in Petrochem. And every single Trinidadian should be represented in that conversation. Mm -hmm. We should be having mass national rallies with open microphones for people to come and speak. In lieu of that, let us at least get all of the political parties, all of the civil society, all of the NGOs, all of the nonprofits, everybody come together. Let us talk. Who in Trinidad and Tobago in their right mind could be agreeing with this shutdown of Petrochem? <laughs> As far as I can see, um, some of the population, they have this attitude, well, it's not affecting me, why should I bother? Why should I bother with my attention? Man? But Shari, but, but Shari, I know what I'm saying, nobody, not at their door. Nobody is insulated, it, this is at their so, door. And I don't know what else can make them open their eyes to see. It is, it is they're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And eventually it'll have a domino effect. Right. It's going to affect you sooner or later. So, what, you, what, what you are waiting on to be on the streets? And <laughs> if you were Derek Chin today and you own Movie Town, <laughs> and the people no longer had money to buy Movie Town tickets, all your investment gone. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 and, I, and I'm using that as an example. If you were the Bermudez family today sharing, selling biscuit and cake, people can't buy biscuit and cake anymore. The country, at the highest to the lowest level, this is going to impact everybody. We just got to keep putting the information out there in the public space. Okay. We just got to keep doing it. Yeah, but, but, but this, in this case, though, Janice. Keep people have to come together. The, in this case, though, yeah. the, the building on fire. Mm -hmm. This is not just yeah, standing right. outside and discussing the fire. Mm -hmm. This is taking steps now. Right. 
this is understanding that the company that got the eight million dollars to build the ramp for the galleons passage spent fifty thousand dollars in material what was the rest of that money for this is a country where it is too easy to throw away eight million dollars it is it is too easy for the prime minister to be able eight million is eight million dollars for the ramp for the ramp it is yeah. too oh easy for that for that God. for that what about uh, peppers i think they have actually done that for hundred and fifty thousand dollars there you go eight million there you go there you go and then but 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 the, but the point that I, the point i want to put on into the conversation it can't be so easy for the prime minister who doesn't have the authority to make the decision to spend three million dollars i'm hearing members of parliament and government ministers and even spokespersons talking but they're not relying on fact and they're not lay, 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 laying on law to say this is what gives the prime minister the authority to spend three million dollars on maxi coffee's medical bills mm -hmm. maxi coffee was not entitled to receive it according to the salary reviews commission Right. So on what grounds did you? You cannot say humanitarian. What made you choose Maxi Coffee and again appoint this in the public space? What made you choose Maxi Coffee's condition over any other citizen of Trinidad and Tobago? Correct. What was the criteria? In law, in law, that's the criteria. <laughs> in law, in law, Re relative, relative. That, that, that's it right there. The, the part that will remain the most hurtful to me, and I say hurtful because packaging closing down for me is like me directly losing my job, and I have to say that. And I don't know why more citizens don't feel that way because who who leaves their job and then has nothing else to fall back on? That's basically what we're doing to packaging closing down our main source of income with nothing to to back it up other than raising taxes and like yeah. Philip said us being the brunt of the like I said the hurtful part about this for me is watching and listening to the Prime Minister read over the past decade plus of how much money we have spent on projects that started off as one hundred million and ballooned to seven billion and looking at all the wastage that we have had over the years. But you can't use them, the word waste. When you well, use the word, when you use the word waste, it seems it like sounds like are, you yeah. know it's it's lying down somewhere rotten in the sun. It's not. Mm, yeah. It's been stolen. Where is the okay. law enforcement? Where are the checks and balances? Mm. Who is responsible to say, hey, we are not paying that bill? E Beam, Live Sport, under Kamala Pasad Bisessa, thirty-four million dollars, two checks. Seventeen million dollars each. One paid, nothing done. The other one had to be paid too. And the people in riot for that, thirty-four million dollars. There are people in this country suffering for the most basic amenities. Yeah. Country's being reduced to poverty. So That's what it is. But it's being plundered, Shari. Mm -hmm. It's being plundered. The people with authority are using their office against the people. The Prime Minister has serious questions to answer. And we are not getting anywhere near it because we have reduced our politics to racist politics that is UNC or PNM. And that if PNM getting away with this, look at what the UNC gets away with. And the average person talking that foolishness and not realizing that they're consigning their own selves to a life of suffering. Mm -hmm. I understand it's going to take an effect because if the poor can't sleep at night. But you know, somebody's gonna be only one percent will be affected because they're gonna turn on them in terms of getting their you know in terms of trying to get But even if crime but, but 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 you're yeah. right, even if crime is not waking up people right now in a country that is still the third wealthiest nation, we use this as a silly statement. We're watching a government entering into a deal with China that nobody in the country wants. Nobody wants to mortgage this country to China. You need to elect a government to come into office to break that deal, give China back their money, tell them, come and take it, wherever you bring. But they, but, but they actually, and both political parties have done this. We are in debt to China for the Coover Hospital as much as we're in debt to China for Napa, Sapa, and Tapa, and the Taruba Stadium that people went to sit down in last night thinking that everything hunky-dory, it not. Your children's children paying that bill. Correct. I'm quite impressed that the Malaysian Prime Minister will not break three big deals. 
China. But you have to. China. But 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 look where they reach. They reached the, the level money that to, to literally sold to yeah. China, and that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. Well, they don't have I think at this point, Trinidad and Tobago, we're going to bring this conversation to wrap until to close to anybody paying attention. If you are fighting, if cognitive dissonance is allowing you to believe for a minute or a second that any of this is right or somehow functional, you need to check yourself and your own level of knowledge. Because as everybody's been saying on this panel and in this conversation, at the end of the day, the people are going to be the ones left holding an empty bag. It is the people that are going to be paying the cost of this madness. And the people of Trinidad and Tobago have to wake up. Do not, listen to me, Karani, when they shut Karani down, Karani owned more land than there is land in Tobago. Where is that land? Where are the hundreds of millions of dollars of rum stocks that was in Karani? Where is that? But I'm seeing friends and financiers of both parties getting land for a song Flipping change of use housing project for land that used to be food growing land. I'm seeing more strip malls building in this country than anything else. And the price of food is reaching beyond the average person. We've voted ourselves into a hole. We voted ourselves into a corner. We cannot continue to consider what is taking place between those two political parties and their finances as the end all and be all of our political expression. Trinidad and Tobago needs to wake up the people of this country and the purpose of these two videos we did tonight is to get you to understand. Listen to what the Grenada people were saying. If we get that to play. That one giving us trouble. I'll try it and while, while, while I'm trying I want to tell you this. If we are going to try to convene civil society in a conversation, we're, trying to, we're going to try to get a round table. You have to make yourself available. You have to talk to your people, whatever you're a part of, and see if you could get that to be in the conversation where we look towards a resolution and a solution outside of shutting down and selling this nation's resources. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Call it a close definitely. there? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. So we will stick a pin in from here. Trouble, and people need to understand that. Yes, Trinidad, we need to stand up, and we can We have to secure our resources. We have to re secure our wealth. And what 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 are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Eat dog, eat cat. What you are we gonna do? Speak Mandarin. <laughs> if well, we speak a, Mandarin. Well, the, the other thing too is, um, and, and I think we need to also start from now is also to bring up the topic of the lab report, which the Chinese are looking to build. I mean, that's another piece of bubble that's going to rip this country apart. Well, again, China just going through an economic takeover of many places around the world. So yes, they have a sense of, on. you know, where the U.S. is basically going around the world, pushing their military might. Um, China is using uh, economic might. Um, and but that's it, they're going to take true. over the world without a shot fired. Exactly. Yeah. They're going yeah. to use the, the, their economic might to take over. This yeah. is colonialism again. This yes. is empirism yes. again. That, yes. That's what's going on. It's expansion. Yeah. Yeah. Because what's the best way to get a country that is already a republic or an independent nation? Let them owe you. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to now own things within their own country and key things too. Because yeah. if you're looking at the strategy China is using, it's, it's no, no fly-by-night. It's, it's very important uh, 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 bodies that they are uh, consuming control over. You know what I mean? So, um, Zimbabwe, they just took over, took over the, the airport. airport. Yeah. Yeah. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Sri Lanka, we're hearing yeah. about countries yeah. all over the world. Well, and, yeah. um, Venezuela is going to get out. Well, yes, Venezuela is also on the cards. And well, next Trinidad, of course. <laughs> we already see what's going on there. So, um... I mean, really and truly, Trinidad, we have to make a serious decision where our future is going to be, you know. Uh, and if we think it's hunky-dory, it's not, it's not, it's not. Look at Venezuela, and that's our that's, destiny. That's going down the road, yeah. we are going down right now. It is Venezuela we are looking at, and possibly worse. So, I mean, at the end of the day, listen, we, we, we are really trying to bring some level of hope, some level of sense among the entire ensemble of nonsense being shoveled down our throats right now. So, anybody else want to add anything? All I can say is, think Wake about the up. kids' future, think about the children. Wake up. 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 Wake
So we're going to stick a pin here. We're going to wait on the update from Richard Blaze as to what, what response he got from the union. We're not only speaking to the union, but we want to speak with the union. We have a plan that we would like to propose. We want to talk to the union and get their buy-in. If, if we get their buy-in, we want to convene civil society to a round table. All of this we're working on this week, and we'll keep you in the loop as to what's going on. Do not, please, do not, please do not get distracted by foolishness. This is the most important issue in every Trinbagonian's life right now. Our nation is on figurative, literal, proverbial fire. They are looting, plundering, and pillaging Trinidad and Tobago. And we need, we need to stand together as one people under one flag and rescue our country from the madness of these zealous businessmen and their political operatives in both of those political parties. You have a responsibility to your country, to yourself, your loved ones, and your future. What you do next is up to you. We are trying our damn hardest, and we're going to come to you with more information as the week progresses. Don't forget this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue, we have a public meeting noon at 19 Stanmore Avenue, so come down and join us and spread the word about that. This is going to be the overriding topic until we get a resolution. And so, And there is a youth meeting. When? What's going on? This Saturday, the youth meeting. Yeah? Yeah. All youths are invited. We have a youth meeting this Saturday at 6 p.m. So until we speak again, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.